Susan here. Okay, I'm back. Now we're going to sew the Victoria Beckham dress that Meghan Markle wore and made famous, and that's what's next. Okay, guys, so sorry for the delay. Um, I guess there's a little bleep in the entire world with the coronavirus. And I just wasn't feeling well. I'm not sure if I got the virus or not. I never did get checked. But for about two weeks, I really was in a lot of pain and had absolutely no energy. I started to um, work on the dress and started to sew the dress on another episode, but then I had to stop. So I'm a little bit ahead with it. And I'm only going to show you each step that I have done on the flat um, after I've sewn it because it's just too hard for me to move and um, station the camera differently and change all the lighting. Just still not feeling that great yet, but I wanted to get this done, so let's get started. So just to go over that um, for episode one and two, I decided to decode or make the pattern of the Victoria Beckham dress that Meghan Markle wore and made famous, which was the turquoise t-shirt dress, so to speak. And so in episode one, I used my 2010 design because it had the basic elements that I needed. And I showed you how to make the block pattern pieces of that design. Then in episode two, I took those block pieces, added seam allowance, made sure that all the necessary ease and shapes were in there, and I cut it out of the lining and the fabric. The fabric was very similar to the fabric that was used on the original dress. I just happened to have it in this green color. It has a wool blend with a 3% stretch. Okay, let me show you on the flat now what's got, what I've gotten so far. Okay, before I go any further, I want to take a moment and ask you guys to please put in the comments what do you want to see next? I, this is new territory for everybody, probably in the entire world, and also for YouTubers, um, especially since you know everybody's you know not working or being laid off or whatever. I'm not really sure what is important to you to see on YouTube from me. Do you want to have a live YouTube where we're communicating and you're learning and asking questions, or do you want to see very in-depth things? I really need to know what direction you guys want me to go in. So I really appreciate. Put something in the comments below. Okay, let me show you on the flap now what's going on. So this is the main fabric in that beautiful wool uh, blend and I have it in green with a 3% stretch almost identical to what the original dress had and then I also cut out the lining in this nude color. I put that aside. What I started to do was actually do the darts. The two darts here that are on the front part of the body as well as the two curved darts that were on the skirts themselves. I may show you that later. I also then decided, because this is so sheer, I'm narrowing every single edge of all the pieces of the main fabric of the main part of the dress so that I can actually sew my half an inch seam allowances and then press it open and have it clean that way, hoping I will not see that with the lining. So I'm gonna go ahead now and take these pieces off and sew the half of an inch seam allowance on the skirt themselves, half of an inch on both sides of the skirt, press it open, I'll be right back. Okay, so I sewed the side seams on the skirt, pressed it open on the inside, and it looks pretty good on the outside. So the side seams on the skirt are finished, and that we're gonna just put aside real quickly, and let's go do the side seams on the bodice itself. So this is the front bodice here, as you can see with the darts and then the back panel piece, uh, back bodice as well. And then we have these pieces, this, these panel pieces. The panel pieces um, go in like kind of a gusset shape underneath here. Um, they have a narrower side and a wider side. The narrower side goes along the bottom of the sleeve and then the wider side goes on the bodice itself. There's also this little predominant curve here. That's going to be for the front to kind of allow for the bust area. So I want to make sure that I put right sides together and I put that curved area um, alongside of where the front bodice will be. So I'm going to take the panel like this and right sides together. I'm going to go ahead and pin that 
along that area. This is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance, guys. It's not going to be a half. And I'm going to just straighten that curve out as I go along. As you can see, it's going to have to be straightened out. And then I'm going to pin that all the way down to the bottom of the bodice like that. So that would be the, the front panel right there. Now I'm going to open that up and I'm going to put one of the back panel pieces. This is the right side. This is then right sides together. And I'm going to put that along here as well. That's also going to be a quarter of an inch. Let's go ahead and pin that where it belongs. Like that. And I'm going to go ahead now and pin that all the way down a little bit more. So that curve is going to have to be straightened out. So I'm just going to go ahead and when I sew it, it's going to be in the manipulating of sewing it. So just to show you, once those panel pieces are done, you're going to see what happens. And that is, it's going to look like this. You're going to have this nice little panel underneath here for the gusset and there's the front and back bodice. I'm going to pin the other side exactly like I pinned this, sew it, I'll be right back. So let's continue on. Um, I sewed the, the, the entire top part of the bodice and I only gave myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance around uh, the gusset panels. And after marrowing it, it takes off a hair. So I had to re-sew it so that it would fit the, the bottom part of the skirt, if that makes sense. I wanted to show you that I didn't really have to do any kind of treatment to the, um, the seams usually because it's going to be fully lined. But this fabric sort of uh, unravels a little bit or, or frays way too much on my test. So I decided I need to marrow this and I wanted to marrow everything out because I want to be able to fit myself and make sure everything fits before I mirror everything together, if that makes sense. And so I'm going to have to probably adjust my pattern um, for the next time for a three eighths of an inch seam allowance around these areas uh, so that I don't have it too tight. Okay, so now I'm going to show you on the bottom. Now I'm going to show you on the flat how the top is going to fit the bottom. Let's do that. Okay, now I have them right sides together just so you can see this is the skirt. This is the top, the upper bodice. I also want to let you know that I did some reinforcement stitching right there on the gusset area, just to be sure, because it's, it's a very narrow seam allowance. Everything's fitting great. I have notches here, so I'm going to put notch to notch. That's the center notch like that. And that's doing well. This notch is supposed to be where this seam is, and that's also doing well. So this is, this is good. And then it also fits all the way along to the very end, as you can see. This is going to be a half of an inch seam allowance, so we're going to go ahead and stitch that all the way across, keeping those seams all open underneath. And after I stitch it all the way across, I'll be right back. Now you can see it's stitched together. I pressed the um, seam allowance down for now to see if that's the way I want to make it, you know, less noticeable as far as seam allowance because this is so sheer. Now what I want to do before I try it on the dress form, I'm going to actually put the shoulders together and I'm just going to put, you know, both of the shoulders together like this, pin that together, stitch a half of an inch seam allowance and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so the basic pieces are put together. I have it on the dress form very briefly. Um, it looks like it's a little shy here in the center back, only on the top part. Glad I put an inch seam allowance there to make sure it's fitting pretty good. Um, I have to do the same thing now to the lining and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I have the lining sewn and put in there already. I did not clean any of the seam allowances. I know that doesn't sound normal or sound right, but I did not want to see anything inside and outside. So the least amount you do to a sheer type of situation or line or fabric, the better. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the dress form now because we're going to have to make sure that this is okay before we actually start doing the zipper area, etc. 
So we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. I'm going to pin it on the dress form. Like that, with it intact. Like I said, um, you, want, you don't want to see seam allowances. You don't want to see things like that. So I'm trying to put in the least amount of fuss in the, in the actual seams as possible. I'm going to go ahead and just pin that in. They both have stretch. It's looking really good. I think it is definitely helpful to have the lining. It makes it look richer, a little fuller. It's not so skimpy. And you can see that it really is starting to look pretty amazing. Um, and we have to make sure, I want to make sure the neckline is right. I think that I have to put a stay stitch there. And then I'm going to be working on getting the zipper area the way I want it to be. Of course, the, we're going to have to hem the sleeves, make sure the fit is good. But it is definitely really, really coming out nicely. When you're making something for the very first time, there's always going to be some adjustments and some, some you know, trial and error, so to speak. But so far, we're doing good. I'm going slow with this. I just want to make sure that it's going to be a good shape and a good fit. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop there for this episode because I want to kind of think about how I want to go about the zipper and the lining to make sure that it's lined properly. So this is what we have so far. It's fitting the dress form pretty good. You know, obviously I have to try it on myself. I got to figure out how I'm going to be able to do that um, by myself. But um, stay tuned for the next episode. We will get the lining completely sewn in. We will get that zipper, famous zipper in the back done. And that's what's next. All right. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And stay tuned for the final episode. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.